Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. You know what's even better? Tell your friends about it. That's how you build my channel. Tell them all about the best wine show anywhere. All right. Today, I'm reviewing the second of two wines from a winery I reviewed at the end of 2019, Quinto de Amial. I did a very detailed history of the winery in that video, so I won't go through all the details in this video. Check out last week's video for the short version of the history. Today, we're just gonna dive right into the wine. So here are the stats for this wine. The 2020 Esperam Quinta de Amial Loreto suggested retail price is $18. It's Vino Verde, 100% Loreto, granitic soil, hand harvested, whole cluster. There's least, contacts for, least contact for approximately seven months in stainless steel. Aging potential is 15 years. I don't know if I'm going to hold on to it that long, but it'd be fun to try. The ABV or the alcohol is 11%. The total acidity is 7.4 grams per liter. pH is 3.02. Residual sugar, 1.5 grams per liter. And only about 5,200 cases are produced. So, yeah. Let's talk about this 15-year aging potential. You know why? The pH is 3.02. Was it 3.02? 3.02. That's why. There's a ton of acid in this thing. Well, that's the, that's the intensity of the acid. 7.4 grams per liter. That's a lot of acid. That is what makes things like Riesling ageable because the acidity is off the chart. It's usually like that 7.4 or almost not quite 8 but in that seven plus, seven and a half plus, and the pH, sometimes these Rieslings are pH are like 2.85. So yeah, let's check it out. I'm excited to try this one. I mean, I had one last year, but I'm gonna do this year's. I didn't save last year's, I drank it. I don't know what you mean by, I didn't save black, should I drink it? What? <laughs> Oh, black, should I drink it? Wow, Siri, you sounded like you said something else. I wasn't talking to you. So those of you that have the Apple Watch, does that happen to you? Like, you know, you 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 do your wrist like that and it and it it you press in the little thing or it, it thinks you said, hey, you know who? And then it talks to you. I'm like, I wasn't talking to you, Siri. Anyway. So medium minus concentration of color, you know, just yellow. It's been a, been a broken record all night. It's yellow, a little bit of green, gold, because that's what white wine is. So yeah, let's check it out. Call it medium, call it medium intensity, youthful. So we got some pomaceous, got some green apple, orange, peach. Little white flowers. We've got um, there's there's a touch of like like creamsicle going on here. I mean, the least contacts probably giving me that not vanilla, but that richness. I mean, this is all stainless, right? It says stainless, yeah, all stainless. But that's it. Like it's it's orange, white flowers, a touch of like richness to it. That's probably why I was getting that creamsicle thing going on. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of apple to it too. I can't just spit into that. Although it would just start spraying up here. Again, I, mean, I guess I could dump it between wines. It's kind of a bitterness to it. Not a phenolic bitterness, but a bitterness of fruit. It's really subdued. That orange and that green apple are there, but it's really subdued. It's more of a mineral type of quality. And that's one thing I didn't really talk about with any of the wines so far tonight that I've already done the review for. And I haven't talked about minerality. I haven't talked like wet rock or anything like that, but this one has a little bit of minerality. 
there's a little bit of, there is a little bit of salinity to it. Kind of like, not a salt encrusted, but like you took an orange and like kind of just a, your, your dude there, whatever his name is, Mr. Like, how is that, how is that like not a health code violation to like dump salt off of your skin? That's why I don't get that guy. That guy, that guy's weird. And there's something wrong. If you're, if you're my chef and you're doing that, I don't want to eat your food. I'll be honest. I mean, I'm being pretty, I mean, I'm being pretty blunt about it, but I'm not going to eat food that a chef is like bouncing crap off of his skin. I don't know if you like did surgical stuff and like scrubbed all the way up here, like, like surgeons do. Anyway, I'm sorry. I just don't get, I just don't get celebrities like that who, yeah. But back to the salinity thing. It's like you kind of like a little dusting of salt on the orange. It's the, there's, you know what, it reminds me of salads, which I mean, salads are every, I only look over here, all the wines are already done. Salads are great with white wine. But sometimes you get, you get that, salad quality in the wine and this time I'm kind of getting that it could be just I've had so many wines tonight and I mean I'm spitting all of them but though I have had a little sip of a couple here and there but this is really like a very to me like a really big salad wine for me it's tasty now let's talk about the acidity <clears throat> I probably cut all that out I mean I probably cut out the audio on it the acidity is there. This somewhat reminds me of Riesling in the acidity level. Not Riesling in the flavors and aromas, but, or the body, because you don't really have Lee's contact like this in, in Riesling, but I see where they're going with this, with this 15 years of aging potential. Like I'm tempted to literally sit on this wine for a few years. I'm not going to do 15 years and come back 15 years later and make a YouTube video out of it. I have no idea if I'm going to be making YouTube videos 15 years from now, but I didn't know I was going to be doing it. What? This is a 2000, we are watching this. I think it's still 2021. Even if it was 2022, like I started this venture in what? Oh, nine. I didn't even think it was going to go 10 years, much less 12 or 13. So who knows, maybe 15 years from now, I'll be on episode like 5,000 or something. The point is, I'm tempted to hold on to this wine and do a video a few years later to see what it's like. And I don't know why I didn't do it last time. Maybe last time I didn't catch on to the 15-year aging potential. But the wine's good. It's tasty. I think it's really refreshing. It's crisp. It's clean. It's well-made. There's a richness to it. I, I attribute that to the Lees, like a good mouthfeel. You should get it. it was, how much is this again? 18 bucks? Under $20, dude. I'm telling you. You can have all the Chardonnay in the world you want. And I like Chardonnay, kind of. I mean, I like, but this is the type of stuff I would gravitate towards. Just for the flavor profile. But man, under 20 bucks, you're getting killer wine. Under 20. From all over the world, but. Yeah, I'm not saying that you know. This is this is Vino Verde and 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 this is this is Rio Spicious, but I mean they're neighbors. But yeah, I mean forty bucks. This was a killer wine for forty bucks too. Oh wait a minute, I don't think you've seen this yet. Ah. Anyway, get it. Eighteen bucks. All right. So well, that's gonna do it for the wine. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And tell your friends. Until next time. Oh, already finished it. Anyway, drink some really cool vino verde.